Good morning. This is Silo Missionary Baptist Church located in Rougemont, North Carolina. Today is July 5th, 2020. The Sunday School lesson for this morning is Samson's Final Victory. My name is Charlotte Timberlake and I'm the adult class teacher. Golden Text. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Judges 16.30 Today's aim, facts, to know that giving in to temptation will always lead to bad results. Principle, to reveal that a wise person will learn to rely on the Lord and turn to him when being tempted. Application, to make a point to ask God to help us resist temptation every day instead of thinking we can battle it ourselves. Lesson summary. Number one, the humiliation of Samson, Judges 16, 21 through 27. Samson told Delilah that his hair had never been cut and she had his head shaved while he slept. The spirit of the Lord left him, although he was unaware of it. He thought he could free himself from the Philistines once again, but he had no strength to resist them, verses 17 through 20. As a result, they captured him and put him in shackles. Now that the Philistines had the upper hand, they enslaved Samson and tortured him. They gouged out his eyes and made him grind in the mill. This was humiliating for a strong man such as Samson, for milling was work reserved for women and slaves. While Samson was grinding at the mill, the hair on his head began to grow back. There was no magical power in Samson's hair, but the mention of this is a signal that God was still going to do something through him. God was not done with Samson yet. Even when we sin, God still loves us. The time came when the Philistine leaders wanted to offer a sacrifice to their God, Dagon. The sacrifice was to praise Dagon for giving Samson over to them. The building they were in was full to capacity and there were about 3,000 people on top of the roof. They were all having fun at Samson's expense when he asked a young man to help position him between the support pillars of the building. Number two, the death of Samson, Judges 16, 28 through 31. When Samson felt the pillars, he prayed to the Lord. Finally, after having been completely humbled, he called on God for help. He belatedly acknowledged the spirit of the Lord. Samson asked God for one more burst of strength as he wanted to avenge the loss of his eyes. Sadly, revenge was still on his mind as he prayed, but God granted his request to display his own glory. Samson put his hands on the pillows and gave a mighty shove both ways until the building began to collapse. It fell on everyone there, including Samson. Samson's last words affirmed that he would die with the Philistines. A life that could have been used for so much good ended in tragedy under a heap of Philistine rubble. We will now go over the questions in the back of the lesson. I will be using the adult teacher book in which the questions may be in a slightly different order than they are in the adult class book. Number one, how did the actions of Delilah lead to Samson's capture? Answer, Delilah persisted until Samson finally gave in and told her that because he was a Nazarite, his hair was a symbol of that vow and was the secret of his supernatural strength. Number two, what did the Philistines do to control Samson? 
answer they shaved his head while he was asleep put out his eyes and put him in shackles question number three what was the name of the philistine god answer dagon what do we know about this deity answer dagon was portrayed as a fish it has been discovered however that dagon was worshipped as a god of grain number four what did the people request concerning samson answer they wanted him to entertain them number five where did samson ask the lad to take him answer samson requested that the boy take him to the supporting pillars of the building why answer he told the lad he wanted to lean upon them he was tired because of the entertainment he had just provided. Question number six. What connection does Samson's hair have with his strength? Answer. This symbol of his Nazarite vow was connected with his great physical strength. This, however, should not be looked upon as something magical. His power was not in his hair, but in what his hair symbolized, his dedication to God. Number seven, what was the substance of Samson's prayer? Answer, Samson made supplication to God, like the dying thief who asked to be remembered, Luke 23, 42. Samson cried out, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, Judges 16, 28. It may be that Samson had been seeking the Lord since being blinded by the Philistines. Question number seven continued. Do you think this was an acceptable prayer? Answer, yes. The fact that he is mentioned among the great heroes of faith, however, tells us that he trusted the Lord and was used mightily by him. Hebrews 11.32. However, he seemed to be somewhat self-centered. He seemed to be more concerned about vengeance against the Philistines than about God receiving glory through these events. Number eight, how many people were on the temple roof watching Samson? Answer, 3,000. What did the writer of Judges conclude about Samson's final act? Answer, the narrator summarized that the dead which he slew at this death were more than they which he slew in his life. Verse 30. It could be said that in spite of all the tragedy surrounding his life, Samson offered himself sacrificially in this final act. Number 10. What do we know about Samson's burial? Answer. Samson was honored and revered and given a proper burial, something that was cherished among ancient peoples. Samson's body was taken back to the family burial plot near his birthplace, where he was laid to rest. Here are the practical points from the lesson to ponder over. Number one, there are often outward consequences to sin, even when God forgives you. Judges 16, 21. Number two, God shows us grace, even though we do not deserve it. Verse 22. Number three, the ungodly often interpret the setbacks of God's people as proof that God does not exist or does not care for his people. Verses 23, 24. Number four, the unrighteous believe that the Lord is powerless, not to be taken seriously. Verse 25. Number five. It is better to suffer in righteousness than to perish in unrighteousness. Verses 26 through 28. Number six, though we make mistakes, God is always ready to turn them around for his purposes. Verses 29 through 31. In summary, although the story ends sadly with Samson's death, what can we learn from his life? Number one, 
we cannot abuse any gifts God has given us. God gifted Samson with incredible strength, but he often abused it, using it to show off rather than bring glory to God. He learns the hard way that the Lord can give and take away gifts in a moment's notice. Number two, sin leads to consequences. We will encounter many Delilahs in this world who will try to find our greatest weakness and take advantage of it. We need to recognize that Satan will send temptation our way in an attractive package. Number three, even at our lowest, God can still use us. Derived of all his strength and humiliated beyond measure, God returns Samson his strength for one last showdown. Although Samson dies in the process, he ends up killing more of Israel's enemies than he ever had during his boastful, revengeful days. Is there someone or something that is turning your heart from following the Lord? If so, you need to turn back to God and give your life to him. Follow the word of God for guidance in living a righteous life. Do we really stop and listen to God to hear his calling and to do his will? Or do we get distracted by the world? The good news is that God can use us even though we may have failed or don't feel usable. Isn't it confident to know that even when we fail the Lord, we still can call upon him? What an awesome God that we serve. This will conclude the lesson for this morning. Thank you for listening and may God lead your path.